Hello, this is Rob from Maverick. Nice to see you here. Let's talk about levered ETFs. In this session, we are going to be talking about the symbol KOLD. This is the 2x natural gas inverse return of the natural gas index. Now, they used to have 3x ETFs on this, DGAZ and UGAZ. Those were discontinued in June of 2020. After the pandemic hit, and the long funds had 99.6% losses because nat gas got crushed. Credit Suisse, who ran them, decided, hey, you know what? These are just too volatile. We need to do something else. And so they discontinued them. So now all you can get is 2x on natural gas. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Before we can just jump into the KOLD, we need to cover what an ETF is at first. In case you don't know what it is, it's not going to make any sense without it. So we're going to go through really quickly what an ETF is. Whenever you hear the term the stock market, that really doesn't mean anything. Look, there's several different exchanges where stocks are bought and sold on a daily basis and they go up and down. There's really no way to say, hey, how are all the stocks doing? And so they created these things called indexes that you could actually track what the market was doing, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Standard & Poor's 500, the Russell 2000. And they created these as a way for someone to look at this number and say, oh, the market went up today, the market went down today, but it was just a collection of those 500 stocks that they put in there. In 1993, a firm called State Street created the first exchange traded fund called the SPY, or as was called the Spiders. This was developed to deliver the same return as the S&P 500 index. The great thing about these is it was a stock. It wasn't a mutual fund. It wasn't indexed. It could be directly bought and sold like a stock at any time at a really cheap price. This was a great alternative to mutual funds. Before ETFs, if you wanted to get the same return as the market, you had to pay a company probably somewhere around a half or 1% to run the money to try to get you the same return. Now it's as easy as just buying SPY. And these have options, which is awesome. We're an options trading firm at Maverick, so we absolutely love options on these ETFs. What we're looking at here is the Bloomberg Natural Gas Sub Index, ticker symbol GAZ. This is an index. An index doesn't really exist. You cannot buy or sell it directly. However, this is the underlying symbol that the KOLD is going to try to follow. If there was a trader out there who wanted to trade the GAZ, they can't. You can't directly buy it. You can trade options on it, but you can't directly buy it or sell it. So what we need to do is find an ETF and let's take our multiplier and let's say we wanna find an ETF that has negative two X return of the GAZ and that ticker symbol is KOLD. Again, a cute ticker symbol. They get cute every now and then with these, but cold. The long one is BOIL, B-O-I-L. This is the inverse K-O-L-D. Here is a chart of the K-O-L-D. This is the 2X bearish natural gas ETF, and it's run by a firm called ProShares. Now, ProShares is attempting to get twice the inverse return of the GAZ index. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they don't. But what they're trying to do is trying to get two times the inverse return of the GAZ. If we take a look at these two side by side, on the left is the GAZ, on the right is the KOLD, you'll see that as one is going up, the other is going down. So as natural gas is going higher, the KOLD is going lower times two. And then when natural gas finally does come down, you should see the KOLD go up times two. As you can see here, they're tied together. Congratulations. You now have a way to go short natural gas in your IRAs or hedge. Now look, I know that this isn't something that a lot of you wanted to do. Say, why would I wanna hold natural gas in my IRA? Look, I know it's going to be rare, but you can absolutely now do it. You can go short just by buying this in your IRA, and you can also use this as a hedge if you have any natural gas positions. Let's go through how and when to trade cold safely. We love using these as short-term trading vehicles. Now that could be a day trade. It could be a couple day trade. It could be a swing trade up to a couple weeks, but past that, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. 
with the return differential that we'll go into in just a second. Let's go through an example of using KOLD as just a normal trading stock. Here's the chart for the KOLD Ultra Short Bloomberg Natural Gas ETF. Now we're just gonna make a regular trade on this. I've got this chart set on a one hour time frame because I wanna do a little bit shorter term trade here. I'm going to be using the bar replay feature. If you've never used it, it's awesome. Go check out some of our videos. It basically gives you the ability to rewind the market and trade it. So I'm going to go ahead, this is what I like to do. I like to get this as random as possible and I'm just gonna click on random day. Okay, so what happens is it rewinds back to that point and we start to trade. Now again, I am looking to be long KOLD. I don't wanna go short an inverse ETF, that makes no sense. So I wanna be long. So I'm looking at entry points. At Maverick, we're huge trend followers. Moving averages are telling you everything about this. Uh, we were in a clear downtrend just a few days ago and now we've actually crossed, but you can see here, this line is this 20 period moving average is flattening out. So I'm looking at this chart right now saying I am completely uninterested in buying unless it can get above this level. If it can get above that level, I'm interested. So I hit the play button and we can just see the candles develop. Again, this is as close to real live trading as you could possibly get to get some practice. But we can see now that this is now in a clear downtrend. So again, I have no desire to try to catch the bottom. I've got no desire to try to pick this up. I don't care. I'm waiting and until the technicals are telling me that it is now in an uptrend. And what I need is I need that red line, that 20 period moving average to cross above the yellow line, the 50 period moving average. And I need to start to see some bullish price action. And as you can see here, this thing just keeps going lower and lower and lower. Let's see what happens here. Eventually these will bottom out. It will turn around. It will then go in an uptrend and then we can look for a trading setup. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. It's taking too slow for me. All right. So we sped it up. Let's see what happens here. Okay. So we're starting to get the first signs of bullishness. We're seeing moving averages starting to flatten out we see this actually piercing above the moving average. We haven't really broken out run, but let's see if we can get that 20 to cross above that 50. Okay, now at this point, we now have to look at this and say, oh, uh, this is no longer in a downtrend. Here's the problem. It's not quite in an uptrend yet. So we've got our 50 period moving average is still sloping downward a little bit, but the 20 sloping up nicely. What I wanna see is I wanna see both lines sloping up nicely and also we've got a band of uh, resistance up in here that we've got to break out of too. So let's see if we can get a little bit more bullish price action. Again, I want to see that 50 period moving average start to steepen. I'm not seeing it. So again, it's just it has gone down. You can see that there was no strong uptrend that was created there. Okay, we're back above. Now we're back up above the moving averages. The uh, 20 is not yet crossed up above the 50, but you can see they're both sloping higher, which is what we want to see. We do expect there to be some resistance here at this point. Let's see what happens at that point. Well, it said there is no resistance there. It broke out and here we're having a pullback. So this is a definitely a tradable pattern here. So what was resistance has become support. It's going to kill this one here. As you can see here, we broke out of this resistance point and now we're coming back to this point. I need to see a few more green candles. I need to see two more green candles in order to go along this. Okay. Well, this wasn't a green candle. This was a gap up and a fall, but it is an up candle. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, this was the entry here. And let's call it uh, 4123. Okay, so 4123. As we always say, every trade needs a trailing stop on this thing. So I'm gonna be fairly tight on this one and say, hey, you know what? It is a short-term trade, it's a day trade. I wanna be in and out of here. So I'm looking to be below this 20 period moving average. And I'm gonna be using this 20 period moving average as my trailing stop. So my trailing stop here is going to start at, and what was it? 
39.56. And as this goes higher, if it goes higher, we're just gonna follow that up. We're just gonna follow that 20 period moving average up. Let's see if we get any follow through for it. And you can see, nope, we were knocked out. So the entry at 41, the entry at 41.23, we had that stop in at 39.56. We take our losses and we move on to the next one. Because look, they might work out. Those trades you get knocked out of, they might work out. And those are the worst trades because then you think, oh, I should have done something different. But no, you shouldn't have. Look, this was a disaster in the making. If you held on to this, it was a disaster for you. This is why you always take your losses. There can be some pretty great returns on these levered ETFs, but we need to really discuss the risks. There is what's called the return differential. Remember, ProShares is not actually buying natural gas. They are buying derivatives, options, futures. They are trying to get the inverse 2x return. Sometimes they get it wrong. And you can see in February of 2022, the GAZ fell 9.4%. Now, if you do the math of that times negative two, you should say, oh, it probably made about 19%. No, it didn't. It actually lost. As you can see here, this is where the return differential is pretty brutal. On the top is the GAZ, and here are the monthly returns in 2022. Down below is the KOLD, and here is the monthly returns for KOLD. Now, if you take a look at this top month, you say, okay, 4%. So if it was up 4% on the GAZ, then the KOLD should be down about 8%. Wrong, it was down 18%. Here is the breakdown of all the differentials. And you can see here that this is brutal. This is just really brutal. It's not even a good distribution. Every so often they got it right, but for the most part, they got it wrong. Let's stop for a second right here. Of all of the levered ETFs we've taken a look at, it seems like KOLD has the worst differentials. As you've seen, I mean, we could have 10 to 20% differentials in a month. It just must be very difficult to run this ETF to try to get the same return. So when you take a look at KOLD, it just isn't as great as the others. You can still trade it, but understand the severe limitations to it. The return differentials are going to be brutal on KOLD. That's why out of all of the levered ETFs, this is one of our least favorite. Now look, these are going to have higher fees. Every time you trade these, you're going to pay this part of this annual fee. And really there's no options benefit whatsoever. The options market knows that the KOLD will move twice as big as the GAZ. And so they will just make all the options twice as expensive, negating all benefit at all to playing options. So let's talk about how you can trade options on NatGas. Well, you should do it all on the UNG, on the 1X long natural gas ETF. This is where all the volume is. This is where the spreads are tighter. And whether you wanna go long or short, this is where you should be. If you wanna be long, buying call options and call spreads, then you wanna be buying calls on UNG. If you wanna be short natural gas, you should be buying puts and put spreads on UNG. There is no benefit to trading the options of the KOLD. There's only higher costs. And the last thing we want to take a look at is using it for hedging. And this is probably the best use of KOLD. Let's say that there's a trader out there that's long natural gas, $50,000 of natural gas. And they don't want to exit their position, but they think that the market could go down for the next couple of days. And instead of just holding on to that or getting stopped out, they say, you know what, let me put in a hedge. So they simply go over to the other side and they go long $25,000 of KOLD. At this point, they are effectively hedged. If natural gas does fall, and let's say it falls down 10%, they're gonna take a 10% loss on their natural gas. However, KOLD should be going higher. And if it's a perfect return, it should make 10% where there's no loss. Now look, it might only be 7%. It might be 14%. There's times where you can make more money off your hedge than you lose on your underlying security. This is a fantastic way to use these levered ETFs to hedge out existing positions. And the last thing we need to talk about, again, reminding everyone about the risk. 
Remember I started out telling you that there used to be 3X ETFs in that gas. These took 99.5% losses after COVID when natural gas just got obliterated. And Credit Suisse said, you know what? We're not going to do this anymore. They're too risky. The 2X is still very risky. I've seen natural gas move 20, 25% in a day. If you times that by two, you could lose 50% in a day. If you put all of your account in KOLD and it goes against you, you lose half of it. That's going to be so difficult to come back from. Always follow proper position sizing, especially when trading these levered ETFs. So we love short-term trading on these options trading. You're going to do all your natural gas options trading on the UNG symbol. And we love it for hedging. It's probably the best use of KOLD for any of you who are holding long natural gas positions. Thanks for joining me. Bye.